How about another joke for it? Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James. Joining me today is Scotty Hawk from Hawk's Holocron over on that YouTube channel. So go check him out. And thank you all for joining us today. It means a lot to us that you want to spend some, some time with us talking Joker Part 2, the sequel to the Jokers. Please give us a like, a subscribe, share the video, comment, whatever. We want to hear your comments over real. Put them in the comment section below because we love hearing what you have to say. But today we're going to talk, Scotty, about the Joker Part 2 uh, whatever it's going to be called, we don't know. Probably with the way this movie looks, it'll be just be Joker 2. That'll be all it is. Just Joker 2. Mm -hmm. Big, fill up your screen and everything. Going to be a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed the first Joker. I think when they announced it, a lot of people were questioning uh, why would they make a Joker movie? How is this going to work? And then the first trailer kind of hit. And I think that first trailer really perfectly set the tone for what the Joker was. And obviously the film uh, was a tremendous success. It made a billion dollars. It was nominated, I believe, for Best Picture and all that. Uh, it's a great film. Joaquin Phoenix won for Best Actor, of course. Solid performance as a Joker and a very different Joker than what we've seen before, but still the Joker. And, and I really liked it. So before we get started, I know, I know you're a big fan, so why don't you give your thoughts on the uh, on the movie The Joker or Joker, whatever it's called. I really enjoyed it, man. Joaquin Phoenix killed it. I think he said he's open to the character. The story just has to be right. There's definitely a story there. I mean, you could do anything with that character, honestly. The biggest thing for me with that universe is the age difference between him and Bruce and how that'll kind of halt, like uh, play into like the comic accuracy of the relationship between those two characters. But I think they could do a solo movie. Um, a friend of mine actually mentioned that the fact that it's called The Batman, it would be cool that it's like The Batman and The Joker. And then maybe the next Batman iteration is called the Caped Crusader or something along those lines, like different titles he's had. So we were talking about titles and in my head, I'm just like, man, what if the sequel is just called the Prince of Crime? And it's yeah. like how he is now the ambassador of Gotham as far as like we can do whatever we want here. These people have been doing literally whatever they want for years. And now he's going to like chauffeur in the, the dark times of Gotham. That'd be crazy. Yeah, I love the idea that this is a the, the thing I like about their time, uh, their, their time, their age difference, their age gap is the Joker, kind of like uh, the Batman, is a symbol. They've made him a symbol. He's the complete antithesis antithesis of of Batman. He's a complete opposite, and I kind of liked what they did with that going into this character and how it was a character study about him. And then at the end, he sparks this revolution and the rebellion up against up in arms. And, you know, they go after the cops and there's a big rally with all the, the clowns. And of course that scene, uh, the, the talk show scene is for me, one of the greatest scenes I've seen. It was just such a phenomenal scene, the mm -hmm. editing, the acting, the direct, like everything about it was just phenomenal. Absolutely loved what they did with that. Uh, so I kind of, I like that idea of the, the titles and, and whatnot. I love they call this one, the clown Prince of crime or Prince of crime or whatever, what have you would be. That'd be a lot of fun. I hope the second Batman is called the Cape Crusader, but we'll talk about that on mm -hmm. a different video. We got to get into this one though, because uh, if you listen to any of the Todd Phillips interviews and stuff like that, and there's a lot of really fun uh, podcasts that he's been guests on where he discusses coming up with the Joker. And apparently he pitched um, this movie to DC as uh, it was called DC, uh, dark or dc black yeah i, I remember that was now yep and he wanted to do like all universe. yeah of all the villains and yeah. they said you're crazy you're crazy <laughs> to do that and then he made a and, and billion <laughs> dollars they're like wait, like, wait a minute what what were you talking about <laughs> but but a part of that was he actually kind of mentioned how the joke would actually be part of a trilogy he had this idea for three films now whether or not he planned out three films or he just thought it'd be fun to tell a story in three films is is one thing i think this could work as as a trilogy i also like the idea though scotty where this joker is not the joker that the batman goes up against that this joker is he sets the stage for that joker and you know over time people kind of forget the, this kind of this leader this cult leader for a little while they become becomes an urban legend and then somebody else can take on that persona whether he falls in a vat of acid or what have you i kind mm -hmm. of like that idea now i don't like the joker from the batman being a version of that after seeing that deleted scene but i like i kind of always kind of like that idea and even if this is the same joker that places batman i'm also fine with that whatever who cares because i don't think that's ever going to happen in this universe so that that's not relevant to what we're talking about 
Uh, but we don't know where they're going to go with it because part of what made the Joker so much fun was that we didn't know what was in reality and what was in his mind. We didn't know what he was creating for what was actually mm-hmm. happening. And that, yeah, that sets up, that sets a stage for a sequel. And it, and I think, and we're going to talk about a little bit how this, there's a little bit of a delay again, a script going. And I think that's a crucial part because you can't like, do you maintain that or do you flat out decide this is reality? This is, this is a an hallucination in his head. How do you play that in the sequel? That and I think that's where the stumbling blocks are with the script that they're writing. Dude, there are like a couple of opportunities coming up, I think, for DC to fail upwards. Their rewrites and delays and stuff are starting to get really like put under a microscope, and they're not all looking like bad decisions. So maybe this is just another way they're really trying to think about the future of it. I think it would be insane if they could do a lineage of Jokers and get us to the point where it's like now Bruce Wayne's parents have been killed in the alleyway. And this is like our third Joker throughout the iterations. Like this guy dies in a way that inspires the next that inspires the next, you know, that would be kind of crazy. Maybe they could uh, yeah, like you know, perpetuate the story until Bruce is of age in their universe. I like the idea that Walking Phoenix comes back for a sequel. If the story is right, obviously. And you know, he's tough with his with his projects. He picks and chooses. what He's mm-hmm. not Daniel Day-Lewis yet, but he's up there where he's going to pick what he wants to do. I like that if he came back for a sequel, and maybe in the sequel, that's where he perishes. And then the third one, maybe you have a different pers- person portraying the Joker. And it's not Arthur Fleck. Because the one thing that makes mm-hmm. the Joker so... Uh, intriguing in the comic books is that, and even you know the Dark Knight Joker, for for that matter, is uh, you, he has no backstory. He's not Arthur Fleck. He you know he doesn't have a sick mom. Mm-hmm. He doesn't live on his own. We know he wasn't a clown. We don't know anything about him. Now in this Joker movie that we got, that's mm-hmm. what makes the, that movie work so well. Obviously, is all that. So they're very different. But if you could get, like you just said, if you can get us from here to there, I think that is. Uh, I think that would be a remark. It would be ballsy, I think, too, because all of a sudden you're trading in your best actor Academy Award winner mm. for who knows what. Right. And then, you have to pass the mantle. He, yeah, he's got to pass the mantle, and he's got to be different from Arthur Fleck, but it still has to be the Joker, and it still has to be intriguing enough and purposeful enough for us to want to go through this journey with whoever that Joker is. And that's the thing, too, man. Like, I see this debate a lot with the Joker and, you know, somebody mentioned that, you know, people just don't understand the character. And I think that's the point. I think we're not meant to understand where this guy comes from and growing up, like the Arthur Fleck, like he was never the, he was never my Joker or whatever. You know what I mean? He didn't fall in a vat of whatever. So, you know, it's an open ended question we had literally no idea what this guy's name is and i think it some comics may have touched on it confirmed it here and there but that doesn't mean that another person mm. cannot become him you know that's what i love about the I character saw that on our on our breakdown review uh, episode of the deleted scene from the batman the joker scene from the batman a lot of people were commenting well, i don't understand the joker it's like maybe you don't understand the joker because i don't think like you just said i don't think anybody what makes the Joker the Joker is that nobody understands the Joker and there's different iterations of this mm-hmm. character. And and for you, it might be Mark Hamill. For me, it might be Jack Nicholson. And for somebody else, it might be, uh, it might be Heath Ledger or, you know, who mm-hmm. knows? It might be the Batman from the Harley Quinn animated show. There's all the, or the and Joker all the of Harley those Quinn Jokers show. that you just named all have different backstories, all have different reasons why they are who they are. It's a in universe thing. Like they're just always, it's, the alpha and omega dude it's just a dc thing batman has to have a joker he doesn't always have to be the joker exactly exactly and that's what i loved about the, the joker that we got in this one and and mm-hmm. the arthur fleck joker the what it works i just said what i think works so well with it being arthur fleck and all that is that that is for this universe and for yes. this story if you want to go forward, but I want to talk a little bit about this Willem Dafoe nonsense that's going around. <laughs> Willem Dafoe said he would love to play office opposite Joaquin Phoenix. And I was like, well, that's never going to happen. But then you start thinking about it. And what he said was kind of like somebody else who wants to imitate the Joker, which is kind of what we were just saying. And it almost is falling into their lap. Now, Willem Dafoe is older than Joaquin Phoenix. So you're going, 
opposite of what we're saying with him fighting Batman, but this could be a precursor to potential other Jokers appearing in this world. None of them actually mm-hmm. being Batman's Joker, but a iteration of the Joker. Do you like the idea that Willem Dafoe brings in? Because like I said, I'm not totally on board with it because, well, first of all, he's kind of ruined it, but, but also because he said it, but also how many Jokers are you going to have? But again, if you are going to get rid of Arthur Fleck and then, and to prolong the story, the lore of the Joker, maybe that does work. Yeah, dude, give me three Jokers. Give me three Jokers and do a telling of that. Like it can happen. You just people have to people have to be accepting of comic worlds and not necessarily like bad canon, but especially with these characters and the way that DC does these tellings. Like I would love to see DC uh metal, you know? Like oh, yeah. there's versions of comics where Batman kills every single member of the Justice League and obtains their power like come on so this is light this is light sweatiness compared to some of the things i've seen the joker do it's it's true but wait we so do you but would you be down for the like willem the willem defoe thing yeah like he any actor who is excited about a role like this i think should be taken seriously and especially with someone of his caliber who we know can play a villain already um, it could just be something as simple as a guy that's inspired by him, like you were saying. And then Arthur Fleck has a confrontation with him. Leave it open ended as to like who wins. And then the third one, like tell tell what really went down between the two of them. You know, introduce him in the second one. Yeah, I don't know. It would be the I think writing. It could be a lot of fun too if like there was another Joker running around. And Joaquin imposter. and Arthur Flex, yeah, but uh, but but the imposter is not claiming to be an imposter. The imposter is claiming to be the original, because we don't know the state of mind that Arthur Fleck is in. So he might stop believing that in himself, and that could create a whole other level of neurosis for him. Bro, the, I, like I just, you gotta go. The thing with the Joker is you gotta keep going down that rabbit hole of of where his mindset is not at because he's out of his mind. So Willem Dafoe's. Willem Dafoe's Joker has actual scars, and when they meet, yeah. he goes, "These aren't prosthetics." But yeah, like Willem Dafoe would just make a hilarious joke, like "These aren't prosthetics." Like when he, Ben Affleck says to the guy, "These aren't hockey pads." <laughs> 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 Terrible joke. <laughs> they aren't hockey pads. These aren't prosthetics. I think he would. Um, yeah, Dafoe Dafoe would be a good foil for Arthur Fleck. I think. I think that's. I think that, you know. That's where the script has. They have to figure out what the foil of in this is in the script. How many times are we going to also want to go watch a movie where society beats somebody down so much that they become a criminal? I think that's what you got to right. figure out. And, and really, the ultimate goal of this movie is, you know, I say this all the time about every movie is like, why or why why does it exist? Aside from making another yeah. billion dollars, why does it exist? What is the story? And the good thing about Joaquin Phoenix being attached to this, and I think even Todd Phillips, and I think that's why he's struggling with this, is because if you don't have something that can stand on its own with the first one, there's no point in making this one. This isn't, mm-hmm. you know, Iron Man 2 or, you know, ba- Dark Knight Rises. This is not a franchise that that demands a sequel upon sequel. This could have been a one-off. Mm-hmm. They have, they, you know, everybody loved making this movie, though. When you watch everything, Joaquin Phoenix, like, you know, again, it's shocking that he'd be like, I'd go back to that character. And you're like, what? And Todd Phillips, I mean, he made Road Trip, but and three hangover movies and stuff. So he obviously mm-hmm. will do sequels, but at the same time, you know, I think he respects Joaquin Phoenix and he respects the fact that this gave him an Oscar nod. Like this was kind of a big deal for him. This took him from like goofy comedic, comedic uh, director to Hollywood superstar, yeah. I, w- I would argue. And for he's, sure. but the, but the pro, but the, this thing is though, Scotty is if this movie doesn't live up to the first one, all that clout that he got from the first one just is gone because Hollywood is what have you done for me lately? And if he messes up part two, that's it for him. And that was kind of his thing when he made the Joker was there like you have all this goodwill from all the hangover movies for making all this money. You can go pitch whatever you want. And he used the Joker yeah. and that just made him a bigger star in Warner Brothers. Yeah. So the problem is, though, is now if this one is a failure, he, he drops right back down to, to the bottom of the barrel. And so I think for him. That's not an option. And Joaquin Phoenix isn't going to join if the script doesn't live up to what he did previously. 
Yeah, that can tarnish the movie all all around. Uh, but I'm I'm saying like that event at the end, him killing him on public in public uh, view live on TV, could be what triggers the downfall, the overall bad times of Gotham. Like the police force could start to crack down way harder than they have, and that can just divide the city. That could be like the catalyst for it. There could be something yeah. there as far as story. And that's what I that's what I love about the ending of this movie is how it just it, Gotham is elevated itself to something darker and different and mm-hmm. the, the rebellion has risen. I love that about it. But also oh, and we're both on don't the, know, the asylum. Yeah. Yeah, you but you don't know where Joker ends up because again he's in the asylum. He kind of walks out of there, mm-hmm. but did did he? Because in the in the middle of the movie, don't they cut to him banging his head against? Yeah, against dude. The, so well, so, so a lot of people are like, what if he was just in there the whole time and he's remembering yeah. how he became this man? Now Bruce has grown. Like, come on, come on. Yep, you could do that. But I I think they want. I don't. I just think they're gonna shy. Not shy away. I'm yeah, they don't want to bring the away. Batman in. Yeah. No, because then, oh, first of all, I don't think they would be allowed to at this point. I think you can have little Bruce Wayne, you can have Thomas Wayne. Well, now Thomas Wayne, you can't have, but you could do all that, and you could deal with the the demise of the Waynes as well. That could be because Thomas Wayne has such a, a prolific uh, career in this universe. His death could propel further onto other things too. So, and how does that affect the Joker if Arthur Fleck believes that that was his father still? There's a lot to still, I Man. guess, you could unpack and unravel and have fun They're with. They're delaying it. the Flash, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I know. I know. This is an insane thought, but they could do it. Something can happen in the Flash movie that changes all three of these universes, and we could have the Joaquin Phoenix the Snyder verse and now like, I don't know, man. <laughs> we're going to have another Along talk with about the Batman Flash Reeves. Enough. Yeah. We're going to have a talk about the, I got to, we're going to do another video about, about uh, the flash and that effect. You don't know about it. Yet. I haven't told you yet, but we're going to do that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we will. I look, I love mm-hmm. the Joker. I cannot wait to watch more. And one thing I like about it um, is that it wasn't the typical, there's no sky beam at yeah. the end of the movie. It was very small and it kept it's it remained tiny the entire time. And it and I just I love character piece. I really do love character pieces when they're on film and TV and whatnot. And and I just love that they took their time with Arthur Fleck and like that scene when he kill when he kills the the sin and the clowns gang and he goes into the bathroom and he does this little dance. It's like, well, we're just hanging out with him. Like we're just following him and they're just kind of letting him tell this story. They're not forcing things in your face for it. They're letting it happen. And then when he kills his former coworkers, like just, or his former coworker, unless the other one, like it's just, it just happens so naturally and organically. Yeah. And I've, I mean, you could kind of guess the twist that it was all that, that she was all in his head the whole time. I think that was pretty obvious but even when that happens it's like the way they did it, it the reveal was so great it was it was such a fantastic reveal even though i kind of had a feeling going into it that that's what it was it was just like oh man like it was painful to watch like they did it in such a painful way we're like ah yeah. oh, damn i feel like you feel bad for him yep but then he like twists the knife in the inside of you and he makes you feel like the victim for for being so sensitive to him that now he's like, well, look at me. I'm actually going to shoot everybody in the face. <laughs> yes, exactly. Dude. I'm, I'm sitting here like slowly convincing myself that they're doing crazy things over there. Like they're making announcements about the, um, the team up with the bins, right? What is it? What's the name again? Um, uh, I'm dropping it right now. Jeez. Brain fart. But like they delayed uh bat girl. Right. Not yet. Because- Not yet. They haven't delayed Batgirl yet. Anyway, that video game, we think they're going to do live action. Oh, they are doing it. Gotham Knights, they're doing it yes. live action for real. Yeah. yeah, so Gotham Knights. That's like, that is that is a, a officially unofficially confirmed. They are doing that. Yeah, these are like the failing upward things where it's the delay, but it's a delay for a good reason. Did, did they delay the making of this Joker sequel and the Flash at the same time for no reason? I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I, I don't think. I know. I think this one, though. When does AT&T not- take over? I believe April 11th. I don't okay. want to like I, the, the thing. I think this Joker one is completely unrelated just because I think it's a different brand because I think isolated. it's still under the DC mm-hmm. dark. Yeah. It's under the DC dark label as well. And this is more Keep Todd Phillips. Al- yeah. 
build that. Yeah. Call it that more DC dark or whatever. Yeah, I think they should do that and they mm-hmm. can have a lot of fun with it. And, and yep. you know, one thing before we leave, one thing that I really want to see is I want to see the Batman who laughs on HBO Max. I want to see that happen. I think that would be fun. Why well, not? That's Why the not DC do metal, man. That'd yeah. be crazy. Yeah, we're, we're on the same page there. I think it's mm-hmm. look, I, I, I would like a sequel to the Joker, but also if they get to a point where they can't figure it out and it doesn't work, I'm okay with them not doing a sequel yeah. to the Joker as well. Because Same. I don't, again, like Batman, I want a Batman sequel no matter what, but the Joker's one where if you don't do it, I'm okay with that. I can live without that that sequel. Uh, we're going to wrap it up right now. Scott, anything else you want to say? No, that's it, man. Uh, today was like Moon Knight episode one. So I did a watch along on my channel it went smooth. The timer is there. So if you guys want to join me and at the end, I just spoiler break down all my thoughts. I'm pretty sure I got this episode figured out and I'm actually really hyped on their approach to like the mental health aspects of what he's going through. So it's going to be a deep show for some people. Check them out. Hawks Hall crowns go over there right now. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Really appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. Let us know your thoughts on Joker too. Is it going to happen? Do you want it to happen? And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe. You finished. I mean, there's so much self-pity, Arthur. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men.